Hello my book babies! This is my first video of 2016 which I'm super excited for and already I'm getting nostalgic about all the wonderful books that I read in 2015 so in honour of that I am going to be doing my top 15 books of 2015. Originally I wanted to only do 10 books but after I compiled my list of books of potential favourites I decided that there was no way I could narrow this down to just 10 books so I extended the list to 15 because it goes well when I say top 15 books of 2015. In the 15th place um, out of the 117 books that I read this year is Confess by Colleen Hoover. really enjoyed this book. Um, it is a contemporary romance book between um, two characters called Auburn and Owen and Owen is this amazing artist and in the book um, you guys will see if you guys do get around to reading it that there is like these amazing pieces of art throughout it and it was just like amazingly written with these beautiful characters and when I read this uh, the first chapter had me in tears straight away which is amazing because I don't usually ever cry within the first few pages of a book. So this next book is one that simultaneously broke my heart and put it back together from the beginning of this book to the end and that is Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delaria. I would also just like to apologize if I mispronounce any book titles or authors names. I am sorry. This book is about a girl called Laurel and her teacher gave her assignment to pretty much write a letter to someone who has died and she takes this project even further and writes an entire journal full of them. It will reveal her dark past which is something that she doesn't like to think about and it's just so emotional but beautiful at the same time. In 13th place is a book that I've heard so much about. Everyone kind of went crazy for it when they heard it was going to be released and I was lucky enough to get an ARC copy of this book so I got to devour it like a little bit earlier than everyone else and I can say that it definitely lived up to the name and that one is Magnus Chase and the Summer Sword by Rick Rorden and like in Rick Rorden's style this book has the sarcasm and adventure and the amazing characters like the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus series and you guys are pretty much Guaranteed to love it. So in 12th place we have The Wicked and The Divine, which is the first and second of that uh, series. So you've got Phandemonium and The False Act, which I am pretty sure I pronounced wrong. But these are both amazing, the art in this is phenomenal, the storyline is both gory, dark and funny at the same time. And if you guys like graphic novels, I totally recommend picking these up. 11th place is a series that I haven't seen many people reading but it is deserving of way more readers and that is Disruption and Corruption by Jessica Shrivington and this is a wonderful dystopian series about a badass female and her comrade and pretty much um, just them being awesome. So it is about a girl called Maggie Stevens whose father was, was taken from her when she was young and she has dedicated the rest of her life in trying to find him and the way of doing that is that she finds the man she thinks is responsible son and she's planning using him to get to his father and it's just amazing you guys have to read this it is a wicked dystopia and I just know you're gonna love it I read this book pretty recently and fell in love with it and I'm so excited because the second one comes out soon and I need that like immediately and that is A Dark Shade of Magic by B.E. Schwab and this is such a beautifully written book and the characters and the dialogue are all phenomenal and I know I'm gonna say that about a lot of these books but this one in particular because there is a character in this called Lila Bard who is a pirate to be, she's badass and amazing and I think that I have a little huge crush on her. So this book is about Kel who travels between parallel universes um, which is basically between four types of London so you have Red London, White London, Black London and Grey London but Black London is gone like no one can go there even he can't go there until one day he finds a black London relic and he decides to return it so this book goes between like a few different characters perspectives but um, there's obviously going to be a run in between wonderful Lila Bard and Kel and it's just an amazing adventure with sarcasm and dangerous things happening and it's just wonderful so in ninth place is a book for fans of The Book Thief or Between Shades of Grey by Rita Sepides and that is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar and the writing in this book is breathtaking. Um, this author, Anthony Dewar, could pretty much write about the most boring thing in the world and yet I would still read it with so much interest because he is amazing. In 
8th place is a book that I had so many people recommend to me on Tumblr and at first I thought that this book couldn't live up to the reputation that people had given it but it, it definitely deserves the pedestal that sits high above everything and that one is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Elias Sands and this book, guys, this book make you do that thing where like you read like a sentence and you just go like a gooey and you just kind of have to close it and be all like nah. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, I hope you do. So it is about two boys called Aristotle and Dante and the way that their lives into wine. Um, the characters are problematic, realistic and full of so much love that you can't help but love them too. Um, so yes, this book is amazing. It is a wicked contemporary and you guys are gonna love it. So book number seven is one that I read at the start of the year and I don't have many people who have actually enjoyed this book but for me it's one that stuck with me the entire year since I've read it and even now I think about it and I still get so many feelings from this book and um, a part of me wants it to be higher on the list but it only sits in number seven and that is The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand and this is a truly heartbreaking book about a girl whose brother committed suicide. And although it is sad, it is also quite inspirational and uplifting in parts, but it is definitely heartbreaking. And if you guys want a sad book, you should totally read it. I have decided not to just pick one book. Even though this is like top 15 books, I'm just going to swap this one place over so it is for an author instead. Um, this is an author that I discovered this year and she is so amazing that you guys will envy her writing style um, and that is Natalia Jester and she wrote Touch which was her first book which is pretty much about the myth of Eros um, who is a girl and she lives in this town um, making people fall in love basically until one day she falls in love herself and for her that is a very dangerous thing to do but it's amazing like the storyline and the writing and the characters you are guaranteed to just be in love her second book which recently came out is trick and this is her first fantasy book and it is so good so this is also a romance um, I think it's more of a mature young adult like both of her books are but this one I especially loved um, well, I love them both, but Trick especially. So as you guys can see here, you've got the two characters. So you have Jester, and then you've got Briar the Princess. And the storyline is basically about the two of them and the secret that binds them together. The book in fifth place was Forced Upon Me by Alison from Read Around the Rosie. And although Parting wants her punished for making me spend my money, I am so thankful that she brought Captive Prince and Prince's Gambit into my life by C.S. Packett because these books are pretty pretty damn good. So in the quickest way to describe this, two princes, one is defeated by his brother and then sent as a slave to the other prince, but Benoom to that prince that this is another enemy in his area, they form an unlikely friendship in this crazy, crazy world. <laughs> this is where it gets so hard because these next four books, in my opinion, all deserve to just be number one. Because fourth place we have a series that I'm pretty sure everyone knows that I love and that is The Winner's Curse and The Winner's Crime by Maria Rodkowski. Um, the Winner's Kiss comes out this year and I am so excited for it. It's probably gonna be like one of my favorite reads of 2016 but these are my favorite reads of 2015. Um, these are a fantasy with badass female character who uses her brain rather than her brawn and it is so good. So good. It's about a young girl called Kestrel who is the general's daughter and she lives in a world where she either has to join the army or get married but Kestrel who is this strong-minded and beautiful girl decides that she's gonna do whatever the hell she wants and one day she goes and ends up buying a slave called Aaron from the slave market and she does it out of kindness and takes him back to her home but little does she know that Aaron is not just a slave and all this stuff happens and there's a bit of romance and a lot of action and it ends on the biggest cliffhanger in the world and then you go and pick up the winner's crime and all this amazing stuff happens and it's great and your heart's going like beating fast in your chest and you're close to tears and then this one ends on the cliffhanger and then you're just stuck here waiting for the last book hoping that something good will happen and that all your characters will be safe. I have strong feelings for the winner's curse. 
Third place we have Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Miles. And a lot of people probably would have expected that to be my first place because I am a huge Toronto Glass fan and it should be my first place. But there were some amazing books that I read this year. So this book is the fourth in the Throne of Glass series and it continues on with Selena who is the assassin um, and all of her, you know, her clique. Um, her squad and they continue being on this huge adventure and being amazing and badass and all these sad but wonderful things happening to them all and yes this book is big and beautiful and it is definitely one of my favorites second place you guys ready the book in second place <sighs> six of crows by Leigh Bardugo and this book will blow your mind I to describe this book to you guys and do it justice. So I'm just going to read this one quick little snippet for you, right? So this is pretty much like, as I said, squad goals. A convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heartrender using her magic to survive the slums, and a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. So you guys need to read this book. So the spin-off is the Grisha Trilogy. Um, another amazing fantasy series. You guys need to read all of them, especially this book because it has got action, twists, deception, good characters, heartbreaking moments, dark moments, happy moments. It's just phenomenal. So the book in first place is by a really well-known author who's also pretty much known as the Queen of Books and that is Maggie Stiefvater and the book that has reached first place for me for 2015 is The Scorpio Races. I was absolutely breathtaking by this book, the writing, the characters, the plot, everything about it was amazing. So it is about uh, Puck Connolly and Sean Kendrick who are the two main characters and they live on this small island where the biggest thing that happens in November is the Scorpio races which is basically where these water horses which are called like Capus Usule which I don't know how to pronounce are pulled from the water and these are these vicious horses that will bite you and kill you and any chance they have they belong to the ocean yet these people still pull them onto land and they use them for this race and it's this race where people die every year and bad things happen and somehow Puck and Sean Kendrick manage to find themselves in this race and even though they have two completely separate storylines they still entwine and it's amazing there is just nothing that I dislike about this book and I am completely and utterly in awe of Maggie Stiefvater which I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong again but it is phenomenal and it definitely deserves first place for me and a high, high as ever recommendation for you guys to read. Alright, that is my top 15 books from 2015 and thank you guys for watching this. Um, what are your favourite books from 2015 and which ones are you guys most excited to read from my list? I will see you guys soon with another video. I am hopefully going to get around to doing a bookshelf tour for my next video but if not, That'll come up sooner rather than later. Thank you for watching. Um, subscribe and there's all links to my other social medias below. 